right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of GardenStateHighSchoolWrestling.com. I'm Matthew Vargo, and today I am joined by Nick Barzano, the head wrestling coach of Sussex County Community College. Coach, thank you so much for stopping by this evening. Yeah, it's great to be on, and uh, we really appreciate the opportunity here. So thank you for having us. As always, as always. So to kind of start out this interview, I want to bring it to kind of the deal that's been worked out with you guys and Garden State. How did this whole agreement start and what ultimately made you decide that you wanted to go through with this broadcasting partnership? So um, it's funny, I'm very familiar with um, all the work you guys do on a high school level. Um, it's a great resource. I know for wrestling fans that love to keep track, um, you know, the team pages, which list a lot of the school's accolades and, you know, prior experiences and, and things wrestlers have done both individually and as a team. Um, with Garden State, even last year, I was trying to figure out the best way to uh, to kind of grow what we have here. And um, luckily enough for myself, um, I believe it was uh, a couple people from Garden State had had reached out uh, through our social media that we're trying to work on a lot. And um, we were able to set up a, a small inter interview or discussion um, in which that would bring the ability for for our matches to be live streamed um, for us to have our own team page, which would, you know, display our schedule and, and our wrestlers past accomplishments. And it was a really, uh, a really nice presentation on, on how it could grow our program and how it would allow our, our wrestlers to have some beyond exposure, um, you know, after high school and into college, as well as potential and future recruits. Um, so, you know, when you look at the, the overall opportunity, it was, it was, you know, very hard to say no to, and we were very excited to, to have that opportunity as well start. Amazing, amazing. And now a little bit more about this program. It's a very young program, obviously. I believe it was only around for one year at the time when you took the job. So when you first got the job of such a new program starting out, what were some of the challenges that you faced in the very beginning? Uh, exactly. So um, the program did. It had a, and unfortunately kind of started uh, in a COVID year. So that was a little derailment. And then the, the second year there was um, pretty much that first main year. Um, and so when I got hired, it it was uh, a little bit of in need of a revamp. We didn't have any returning wrestlers at the time. I was hired in about May. So the biggest thing was, uh, you know, right before the summer starts, uh, who can we get and how quickly can we get a program built up? Um, I had some experience in high school and some local clubs. So I was fortunate that I had a, a couple senior contacts that I reached out to and uh, they decided that, you know, looking at it, they would like to also come over to Sussex if I went over and, and begin that opportunity. Um, the biggest thing was some schools have full rosters, some don't, you know, you don't want to be the school that doesn't. Um, year one, we, we didn't have a full roster. Uh, and, you know, that that's hard because, you know, you're giving up points everywhere you go. You know, the, the kids can definitely get down on themselves, noticing there's not a ton around them. Uh, but we were fortunate that it was a really good group and they kind of just trusted in the process and really got things off the ground. So that way we were able to continue to grow each year. All right, then. And last year, I feel like was kind of the, I guess, coming out party for the program, in lack of a better term. It was a historic run for you guys to win the GSAC to finish as the champions of the Region 19 and also the Gulf Atlantic District. So just talk about how significant that year was for this program to grow. So it was it was really a, a definitely a big year for us because you had the group that started the program coming back for their last year as sophomores, and you had all the new freshmen that now finally understood a little bit of what was going on that came in with the same uh, intentions of, of, you know, blowing things up. We, uh, we got a couple high-level recruits that, you know, were thinking about other, you know, Division one two II, and three schools, and they came to us, and we were able to have a full lineup, which is a huge thing, and, and really start to wrestle other uh, schools in bigger divisions. We had a home match with East Stroudsburg University, you know, Division two school. Uh, we started going and competing against a handful of Division three schools, and so for the kids to come together and, you know, grow as quick as they did, uh, it allowed them to, I think, peak there, like you said, at the end of the year. And uh, we were able to win our conference um, as well as our region and district. So like high school, uh, there's a region and a district. They're just backwards. So our district is bigger. And uh, our district was about four states. I believe it's Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, um, and Virginia. So it was very nice for the program to really expose the, the ability Sussex County has 
and you know those kids that that really believed in the opportunity uh to kind of allow them to cap off like a perfect you know end run for them and lastly in terms of last season's accomplishments you were named coach of the year for the gulf atlantic district so for you individually in your coaching career to be given that honor talk about how special that is so that again was a, a very nice award to receive i uh i always pay due to the guys i think you know it's it's a kickback of all their hard work and what they did um but to have that uh distinguishing honor it was it was really nice it's great for the program um it's great to show that you know you question am i doing the right things are the right things happening and you know when everything lines up that way you start to see okay we have the right process here we we keep following that um and it was awesome for for the school itself it was on a a national ballot there's like eight eight districts so we were one of eight for that as uh it was, again, like you said, a, a really nice honor to receive. Awesome, awesome. And for kind of to mention the roster a little bit, I'm sure with it being a community college, we have a lot of one-year or two-year guys. So describe kind of the recruiting pitch that you have with roster turnover feeling inevitable every single year at such a rapid pace. Yeah, so it's um, it's very quick. As you said, I, I love, I'm like, man, if we were a school, like 35 guys, would be looking at cuts. But with a two-year school, try to have at least 15, you know, figure that's half of what the roster is on a four-year being. Uh, when I talk to the kids, I try to focus on the fact that uh, there's a quick and immediate chance to hit the mat. So there's nobody that's a junior or a senior in front of them. So they're able to come in and they're going to wrestle off or compete against another freshman or sophomore to get that time in. And then that gives them you know, a, a full season of matches in front of, we go to a lot of schools. We go to a lot of duels with other division two and three schools, some opens with division one schools. And, uh, you know, there's head coaches in the other corner that they're now presenting themselves in front of. And that's a big thing for me to explain to them that, you know, if you're looking to go and, and really get the most out of it, you need to, to be wrestling as much as possible. And this gives you that, that opportunity. Do you keep your recruiting um, strictly in the state of New Jersey or do you try to branch out to the PAs or the New Yorks or Maryland or any kind of neighboring region? We do. So the biggest goal is that you want to recruit the best kids you can. And the further you recruit, the more the pool is going to widen. Um, as a two-year school, we don't have dorms at Sussex ourselves. Some two-year schools do, some don't. We do, um, we do have a lot of local housing that students, I believe, take advantage of, um, as well as some students dorm locally and, and shuttle over. So we're looking to, I get some Pennsylvania guys will get uh, west of um, like High Point area. So we'll get into like Milford, PA, and, and there's a Delaware Valley High School over there that we've gotten a few guys from. We do get a lot of Jersey guys, obviously. Um, and the goal is to... To hopefully in the next couple of years, as the college grows, I'm sure there will be some sort of, of more local housing and we'll start to pull more further recruits. Um, our soccer team on campus, both men's and women's and, and our football and our basketball teams, they they have a wide range of recruits that, that, that are all over the country, as well as a pretty strong international program, uh, baseball especially. So we're looking to start, uh, you know, now that we've gotten off the ground, bringing in some of those recruits as well. Very exciting time. And in terms of last year's roster that brought home a lot of championships for the first time in the program history, were there any big substantial losses from that roster that it's kind of a bummer to see them go? Yes. Um, so there was, I, I, we make a joke, we call them the, the lightning five. Um, there was there was five guys my first year that that were a really strong core and really helped the program take off. Uh, they all came back as sophomores. Um, a couple of them had season and like helped coach all year and came to practice every day. One was the first ever two timer in school history. Um, so that would be Michael Castles, Nick Pagano, Shane Salmier. Noah Ripley and Joe Casella. Uh, we have two guys over at ESU. Uh, Noah's looking to wrestle. He's actually redshirting right now. Um, one of our guys is heading into the academy. One of our guys is coaching. So they all really excelled here. 
graduated and have hit the ground running. But, and now for the current roster as is, are there any kind of are there any returning players or guys that you just recruited in that you're really excited about to really make a leap and make an instant impact for this group? Yep, uh, Roman Citro and Taylor Sibley's were both uh, district champions last year and uh, made a really good run at the nationals. So they'll both come back with a lot of experience. We're gr we're really happy to have them back as well as. Chris Casal and Sean Pulowski, two other national qualifiers. So we have a good core. Um, we brought in uh, Jose from Hackettstown, Alvarenga. He's really, really tough and has a lot of uh, potential for us. We have um, Mike Vandermulen from Jefferson, was a state qualifier. Uh, so we have high hopes for him. And um, we have a couple other uh, freshmen that kind of made their way in that we weren't aware we were getting. And uh, we're excited to get them out as well this year. And now to step away from the roster and look at the schedule, because you guys are going to be all over the place around the East Coast. So how are actually more so who do you think will be some of the toughest teams that you face on this schedule? So we uh, we definitely see there's a couple times in the year where I should say we we peak in Valley. Right. So um, Liberty, which is a very strong NAIA team, will um, will possibly see York and Messiah themselves. They're also um, pretty strong this year. And then at the end of the season before nationals, we'll go for a, a quad over at ESU, um, which will have local centenary who's been ranked nationally recently. Uh, we'll wrestle ESU, who's extremely strong. And we'll wrestle American International College, which is another strong Division II school that we're excited about. Oh, it sounds really, really impressive. And that kind of leads me to how do you schedule these matches against some of these bigger D1 or D2 programs who may not have ever heard of you guys before. Definitely the last couple of years, um, you're kind of calling up and you're like, hey, this is, you know, Coach Barzano over at Sussex. And they're like, who? You know, like, well, Sussex County College, we have a, a wrestling team now. And, you know, the guys are scrappy and they're looking to, to get some more matches. Um, my biggest thing is I explain to the coaches that this five or six days a week, every single day, um, we compete extremely hard. We, we build the best schedule we can. And when we go to these matches, they're not only um, a wrestling match, but as a two-year school, I'm at a disadvantage. I can't hold a, hold a kid for four. So the goal is to start here and to obviously go somewhere else. Um, so I tell these coaches, you know, listen, I'm all for giving you an early look, sending you a kid. So let this be a recruiting trip for our team. You know, let us come out to your campus, come to our campus, see what we have. I'll rotate back and forth each year. And and the coaches are, are I have to say, super great to work with they've they've had no problem scheduling us um i think they understand as well they know that you know you get a really good kid after a year or two of college wrestling out of um the junior college field all the all the all americans in our tournament are usually wrestling division one the next year mostly on scholarship so you know they understand the the level that's there and they're willing to take us which means that you know we're doing the right things the kids are in the right way and you know they're not they're not here just wrestling local clubs or, or schools in their backyard we've never heard of. We're, we're, we're doing straight up teams as best we can. So it's kind of like, I guess, for lack of a better word, at first you're a rival and then you're the ally later on down the line for these guys. Um, when it comes to the topic of traveling all over the place, does that ever get exhausting for both you and your roster? Um. So yeah, the traveling is always tough because uh, you have to pick your battles, right? If you're If you're going to a school that's anywhere over about two hours um we're looking at an overnight so we'll leave the night before we'll stay in hotels um we're really fortunate that the college provides as much as they do for us and they they really support the program and, and we don't get told no too often so we're able to go and have the things we need which is a, a hotel for an overnight trip um you know plane flights for for the trip out to the nationals in iowa so we're not driving too long um, you know, the kids definitely feel it a little bit, I think, after, you know, a long weekend away. They're definitely excited to get home. But uh, I think they enjoy the fact that they get to kind of go on the road a little bit, um, do overnight trips. It, it makes the big change from high school to college. And when all that traveling's out of the way, you guys are on the wrestling map ready to go. What's your message to the guys out there before each and every match? So one of our biggest things is that we're taking a business trip, not a field trip. Um, so we make sure that, you know, we, we're well rested when we get out there the night before. 
we get up in the morning. Um, we, we handle the food and the, the drink situation. So they're really well hydrated. They're eating the right nutritious food that they need. And then we put them through a really big uh, warm up in the morning, make sure they break that first sweat. And then at that point, it's about trusting in the work they do. These guys really put in a lot of time and a lot of effort. Um, you know, some of them work jobs and commute a little bit and then still run, uh, you know, a full time wrestling schedule. So I give them credit and I tell them to, you know, believe in their efforts, trust in the process and, you know, give the best effort and the best push they can and see where, you know, the chips lie. All right. All right. And for the upcoming season, what would constitute a successful season for you guys in 2024, 2025? And what's it going to take for you guys? Because I listed all those accolades at the very start from last year. What's it going to take for you guys to repeat as conference champions, reason champions, and all that? So I think one of the biggest things that that the program is looking to obtain, and I know it's a, a goal on every individual wrestler's list, especially some of our returners this year, uh, All-American status. Um, the program is yet to have an All-American. Um, All-American status is very, very tough. Um, it's a it's a top eight placement at the national tournament. Um, our national tournament is very deep, so we're looking to hopefully finally bring home our, the school's first All American. As far as a team success, um, we're fortunate that wrestling is growing. There's a couple new programs this year in our district. Um, there's a new program from Georgia. There's another new program in Pennsylvania. So we're excited to see what they bring to the table. You know, and and their level of wrestling. The the program itself would like to repeat again as as district champions you know keep our conference championship trophy by winning that and we'd like to break an individual record of uh three three tournament champions with four four district champions this year that's quite ambitious yeah we like to to you know shoot for the stars and eventually send the whole lineup out there to nationals but right now we're at seven love it love to hear it and for my final question so let's say around this time next year how do you maintain this steady level of growth that the program has had? And how do you look to maintain that for years to come? So that's a great point. Uh, we actually spoke about this the other morning at practice, how, you know, quickly last year we were looking at all the things other programs had in terms of success and trophies and championships and how badly we wanted one of our own. And, you know, they were able to bring that in. And now you go from the hunter to the hunted. Um, so now we're, we're no longer kind of sneaking in out of nowhere. People are aware of what goes on They're They're training to beat us. And we need to try to find a way to always pull a, a positive, even out of a situation that looks like it maybe went negative. Uh, you know, you get your first taste at a team championship. You want to win that every year. That that's undeniable. Um, but you know, there's, there's a lot of change in wrestling. And as you said, at one point, it's a two year level program. So, Recruiting classes change over very fast. Programs rapidly, you know, come up and down. So you look to try to win it every year, but, you know, we need to try to maintain, you know, a level of individual success. Um, once we start getting an All-American, that needs to, you know, hey, we're, we're, we're always sending four or five to nationals. We're always bringing home one All-American. And then, you know, the team rate is going to kind of be in there. The team race will always be tight. But, you know, when you have that many, individuals luckily in wrestling you can have a successful program and you know four other five other guys are, are pulling their weight you know the guys will be able to do what they need each year but it's definitely gonna have variations you know you're not always winning everything for the first time so it's about you know creating a a long lasting program that's able to win year after year all right very well said and once again coach parsano thank you so much for hopping on the zoom call today talk a little bit about the team and excited to see what you guys do this upcoming year best of luck Thank you very much. And again, we appreciate it. Thank you.